1730. Thank everybody for coming out. Uh, I especially want to thank the residents for coming out and spending some time with us. I'm going to give some updates. You can uh, hear from the police jury, the parish president, and the sheriff, and they'll be happy to take questions. Uh, obviously, we're here to get a first-hand look at the progress that's been made on the sinkhole cleanup to meet with families and to get an update on the contingency, contingency plan for Oxy One. Just finished up a meeting with the parish president, the sheriff, area legislators, state agency officials, contractors, and, and others. I'm going to highlight several items for you on the buyout process on the Blue Ribbon Commission and some of the other items. First thing I want to do is I want to again thank the, the residents that took the time to come and voice to me their concerns, their comments, their suggestions. I know this has been a, a very frustrating process, uh, and I wish there were easy answers. The commitment I gave the residents, I'll, I'll repeat publicly, is that we're going to do everything we can to hold Texas Brine accountable to make sure that they clean up the, the mess that they've caused. But again, I do want to thank the residents for coming out and sharing. They, they gave us some very good suggestions and ideas which we are going to incorporate into the process and I'll mention uh, a couple of those as I give you these updates. In terms of the buyout process, last week we were we announced that Texas Brine did agree to begin the process for residents whose lives have been uprooted. Now for months we've been pressuring the company to step up to the plate to do the right thing for our residents. Texas Brine is responsible for the sinkhole. We remain committed to holding them accountable. After months of discussions, after meeting with them last week, the company has finally agreed to start this process. Uh, as we noted last week, there was a group of residents who indicated they were interested in talking to Texas Brine about buyouts or settlements. Texas Brine indicated to us they were waiting for a court-ordered list of residents and orders from a federal judge before they could initiate conversations with those residents. Texas Brine received that list on Friday, March 15th. Now the attorneys have the list, they may approach people without attorneys to talk about the settlements, and they can go through the attorneys for those who have already entered in, in uh, lawsuits. Uh, their decision is certainly a, a step in the right direction, but the proof is going to be in the results. We're going to continue to push this process so we can hold them accountable to folks who have been displaced, as I told uh, the company and the residents. It, it is certainly good that they've contacted, the company reports they've contacted 56 residents and scheduled appointments to meet with them, uh, but we've told them the real proof will actually be in whether residents are actually accepting the offers. So it is certainly good that they've started that process, but the real proof will be in the outcomes and the results in terms of people actually voluntarily agreeing to the offers that are made. One of the suggestions that was made today uh, by the residents, I think it's a very good suggestion, is in addition to an independent uh, appraisal that there be some kind of review of that appraisal process. And so we're going to be suggesting that to Texas Brine to make sure that these offers are fair, they are independent, and they are objectively verified. So again, I want to thank the residents. Uh, the suggestion was that there be an independent review of that process in addition to using that third-party uh, appraiser. And so we are going to be talking and suggesting that uh, and asking that the company include that as part of their process. The second update, we announced uh, the creation of a Blue Ribbon Commission whose mission will be to ensure the long-term safety of our residents. They're going to develop specific criteria to develop long-term safety goals. They're going to specifically address three areas, the level of shallow gas in the aquifer, secondly, the current and future stability on the western side of the salt dome, third, management and containment of the sinkhole, along with determination of potential void spaces below the sinkhole. To provide benchmarks for recommendations, the Commission will address at least two key factors, appropriate conditions to determine sustained public safety and the data needed to assess those conditions. The Commission will make recommendations on what the safety benchmarks should be and when they've been sufficiently met. The membership will be from scientific experts in fields specific to different areas of concern from federal and state agencies, the academic world, contractors, and others. State officials, DNR, will make these appointments after consultation with local officials. A second, uh, another suggestion we got from the residents was to make sure that there is a representative of the residents on this commission. I think that's a great suggestion. DNR is going to do that. They're going to make sure that they are represented. So there is transparency in the process, so they do have access to those data and, and deliberations. I think that was a very good suggestion. The third area of update, in terms of the, the cleanup, some of these steps overlap with our plan, our contingency plans for Oxy-1, and I'll defer to the locals, but some of the data we heard, uh, that currently the sinkhole is approximately 1,000 feet di in diameter, 144 feet deep. That is maybe the slot of the weekend due to seismic activity, now has made be roughly 13 acres in size. Worst case predictions on the size of the sinkhole place it 
Uh, it's edged at approximately 1,300 feet southeast of the community, 700 feet south of, of Highway 70. The sinkhole edge is approximately 1,600 feet southeast uh, of the community and 1,100 feet south of LA Highway 70. Any bubbling uh, around uh, the community is believed to be fed by underground formations releasing gas through pathways created by oxygen ongoing uh, collapse. In terms of response efforts, DOTD is doing daily visual inspections, weekly visual bridge inspections, monthly GPS surveys of LA-70. They're comparing those results to determine any movement of the terrain. We've also made <coughs> service with vent wells. 31 observation vent wells have been installed. 21 are currently flaring gas to remove it from the, the subsurface. 10 of the wells not currently flaring are capable, but are currently shut in for work or safety precautions due to seismic activity near the sinkhole or a lack of gas in the area. Eight additional wells are ready to be drilled once seismic data gathering is completed. To date, uh, more than 10 million cubic feet of natural gas has been flared. This week, no new vent wells will be installed due to the 3D seismic data attainment. DNR estimates conditions will allow for installation next week. These wells, will be, these wells will be installed east of the community and south of the highway. A group of wells will be also installed near the community, near the intersection of 70 and 69. Once these are installed, uh, DNR will be able to tell where more wells should be placed to maximize the removal of gas. 24 pressure monitoring geoprobe wells have also been installed to monitor for the presence of gas pressure buildup in the area. 14 of those wells are in the community itself. 75 pairs of methane and hydrogen sulfide continuous monitors have been placed in 33 residential structures. These are integrated into an emergency response system overseen by the parish. To date, no positive alarms have occurred. Where access has been granted by homeowners, homes have been inspected and tested for natural gas and hydrogen sulfide on a regular basis. We're also taking steps to ensure wa surface water containment. Containment is currently being completed around the sinkhole for the installation of an earthen berm to stop the spread of contaminants onto surface water outside the sinkhole into the surrounding area. The initial berm installation is complete. DNR expects the berm completion work to be finished by late May. Once this berm is completed, it will be used to access locations for additional vent well installation. To date, a total of 123,488 cubic yards of sand, 3,416 tons of limestone have been imported to construct this containment. In terms of Oxy-1, uh, the, the contingency plan, something we talked about last week, during work on the sinkhole, DNR was given the data that showed the Oxy-1 cabin was closer to the edge of the salt dome than previous maps had indicated. Uh, according to the experts, there's no data to indicate a failure is occurring or imminent. However, we're not taking anything for granted. We've been monitoring the second cavern since late last year. We will have those test results within the next month to better determine its structural integrity and the distance of this cavern from the edge of the salt. But we're not taking anything for granted. We've already put together and we are putting together a contingency plan to protect lives and property due to the second cavern. I want to give an update on some of this new information. Given the experience with Oxy-3, Oxy-1 has a micro-seismic array installed into it, allowing 24 hours uh, a day monitoring of seismic activity. A network of micro-seismic arrays is monitoring the western edge of the dome. DNR is also performing rock mechanics modeling of the cavern. This is an evaluation of the structural composition of the rock to see how it might be impacted by seismic activity. We're currently using two different monitoring systems, one for the sinkhole in the Oxy-3 cavern, one specific to Highway 70 in the Oxy-1 cavern. The monitoring system for the sinkhole and the Oxy-3 cavern is geared primarily towards the safety of workers in and around the sinkhole. It's numerically based. The system for Highway 70 and the Oxy-1 cavern is geared towards the public. It's access to Highway 70, and it is color-coded green, yellow, and red. Oxy-3 is on status 2 because of the seismic activity detected last week. Uh, that is expected as the, the remains of the cavern are still shifting. Oxy-1 is on a green status. We're also acquiring additional 3D seismic data while we continue ongoing seismic monitoring. The 3D seismic investigation has covered as roughly 94% of the survey work completed, 75% of the drilling work is completed. We expect 3D seismic data collection to be completed by the end of this month. The analysis and results are due to the state by April the 21st. I want to emphasize that's a very important uh, date. That's a very important set of data for uh, determining what we're dealing with and the, the challenges going forward and when it might be, when we can start measuring, when it might be safe for people to come back. Seismic activity in this area is also being continuously monitored with seven seismic surface seismic arrays and two subsurface seismic arrays. I want to make it clear, that date, that's when we're going to have that data back. That doesn't mean that's when it's going to be safe, but that is going to be a very, very important uh, set of data to, to know more about what we're dealing with. 
one of the subsurface arrays in Oxy-1 will soon be replaced. The pressure of surrounding salt caverns is also continuously monitored, reported on 10 second intervals for any sudden changes with, which might suggest a change in structural ability, uh, stability in the area. The next area I want to give you an update on is LA-70 monitoring the small things we talked about last week. DOTD has taken steps to ensure the safety of LA-70 due to its proximity to Oxy-1. DOTD has prepared a three-part monitoring system. The different types of monitors will bounce data against each other to ensure that abnormalities are not due to the malfunctions of the sensors, wild animals, weather. The data includes three parts, automated continuous monitoring of roadway and bridges for movement, automated continuous monitoring of roadway and bridges for subsidence, and third, detection and motorist warning systems. DOTD has already started the installation process. They anticipate this to take six to eight weeks. The first step is for the state to execute right of entry agreements to gain access to the property, <coughs> to place sensors, to work on arrangements, to have them remain in place for the duration of the project with access for service. And DOTD is working with Texas Brian to place monitors and sensors on DOTD right of way property and property already leased by Texas Brian. At this time, DOTD does not anticipate the need for any property in addition to the right of way and the property that's already been leased. DOTD will have to perform site preparation work, which will include access, including driveways and security fencing. DOTD prep work could include the installation of cameras to ensure that sensors aren't being tampered with. And I know I've gone over a lot of information, so I want to close first by recapping the six next steps. When we met last week, I told you the three follow-up steps from that meeting. I want to give you the six next steps coming out of this meeting uh, before I turn things over to Marty and, and to our sheriff. First, uh, we will have 3D seismic data by April 21st. We'll need to analyze that data to determine subsurface conditions, including potential surface sources uh, of the natural gas. That is an incredibly important step. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, uh, just in layman's terms, I know that it's important we install these vent wells and flare that gas, but it will be important to know the source of that gas and the hope that 3D data will give us more information on how much total gas we're dealing with. Secondly, additional vent wells will be installed uh, near the community during the week of March 25th to remove more natural gas from the shallow subsurface. Third, more seismic arrays will be installed over the next three weeks to continue monitoring the stability of the western edge of the Napoleonville Salt Dome and all of its caverns. Fourth, the berm containment system for the sinkhole will be completed by the end of May. Fifth, DOTD will be installing a monitoring system on LA-70. They're also completing the feasibility study of rerouting LA-70 north. We talked last week about the fact they're looking both at a, a, a bypass as well as uh, moving the entire route north and doing that work simultaneously, the feasibility and the environmental work simultaneously. Six, members of the Blue Ribbon Commission will be selected by the end of this week. First meeting will occur uh, no later than the first week of, of April. We're going to continue to work closely with local officials to monitor the progress of the cleanup and also the contingency plan uh, progress. The last thing I want to say is, again, direct at the residents. I know this has been a frustrating experience, and this is a marathon. Our commitment from the state is that we are going to hold Texas Brine accountable. We're going to make sure that they're responsible for cleaning up the mess they have caused. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that they truly make this right. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to the Sheriff's President. I'm going to ask Marty to come up and then the, the Sheriff, and I'll come back to the party and be happy.